Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in and listening. And uh, we got a kind of an interesting show here with Larry on his mountaintop. How are you doing, Larry? Oh, Stuart, just up here hanging on. <laughs> Making sure you don't get blown away, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I got a couple of things here I wanted to talk about. This just barely came in. Uh, it's from the Killshot fellow, Dr. Doom. NASA discovers, and I want your comment on this, obviously. NASA discovers real example of a kill shot destroying an, exa- an Earth-like planet. So how much time do we have left? Just two years ago, space agencies were thrilled to have finally discovered an Earth-like planet that could sustain life being just the right distance from a nearby star. Recent findings, though, news articles have been found about it, have turned this dream into a nightmare by foreshadows the the fate that will soon engulf our own Earth, a fate that Major Ed Dames has been warning us about for years that until recently some thought could never actually happen. The Earth-like planet discovered was named Proxima Centauri B, and a recently studied X-class flare that occurred from its nearest star on March 24, 2017. That's when we got the light from it. Shows that a planet had been that the planet had been completely destroyed by the kill shot event. What do you think? Wow. wow. That's that's incredible. And by the way, uh, you know, just a few months ago, there was a uh, large flare off the sun, a CME that really hit Mars, and they did monitor it and made Mars glow, actually, and, of course, hit Mars with a lot of radiation, too. Of course, you and I both know most everything on Mars is below ground. Yes. Yeah, we've even found the tunnels and the tubes when I was doing the research on Project Red Star. Uh, it's, it's obvious there's somebody underground. They went underground, and now we're getting, I guess you could call it more confirmation that there's something really weird going on on Mars. Personally, I think we're there. I think we can prove we're there. There's Tesla technology up there. There are pyramids and ancient structures as well as modern structures as well. And uh, that was all on our Project Red Star uh, video. I'm probably going to do a second second one on it, but it's going to take a little bit to get it all together. But yeah, and you uh, you were taken up there and showing all kinds of stuff, entities that are living there. At the same time, yeah. you know, I was doing the research on Tythonia, and with the two UFOs sitting out there just as plain as day on a ramp, I mean, the whole thing is <laughs> so obvious. I think people just couldn't believe that it was that obvious, that there's obviously uh, um, a civilization up there. Uh, here's well, absolutely. here's something. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say absolutely, and and. Uh, that was that was really unique because you did not tell me you were working on that project and had those images of Mars. And uh, every time I shared a trip with you that the Lord had take, taken me on, even in the tunnels, even, you know, I even confronted yes. some of the uh, creatures there, and I'd share it with you, and you was, you'd laugh. And I wondered why you was laughing. You was laughing because you was working the other end of it. Yeah. Yep, I had the photographs and everything, and uh, we took great pains to make sure it was all very legitimate. And I think the reason that people reject it is fear. Uh, It either proves we have, like Dr. Greer claims, we have very advanced uh, spacecraft who he claims can travel faster than the speed of light. 
And I was reading some recent articles where they claim that that absolutely is possible to travel much faster than the speed of light. And uh, anyway, kind of interesting. Here's something that uh, I think you sent it to me. Uh, The offspring of hybrid beings once here long ago will be permitted to come upon the earth once again. Now, in Isaiah, and I didn't look it up to find out exactly where it was, but there is a prayer, don't let the giants rise again. But it's supposed to be a judgment of the last days. And here's just part of it, and I want your comments on each part. A great and mighty tempest brews as the kings and lords of the world's nations, now think of Psalm 2, everybody, have plotted and conspired behind closed doors, making secret pacts and covenants that come directly from the pit of hell. Hell has enlarged her mouth to receive the untold numbers whose fate is sealed because of their obedience to utter evil, the king of darkness. What do you think about that? I mean, that parallels Psalm 2 almost exactly. Yeah, that uh, that really, without presenting Psalm 2, uh, of course we know Psalm 2 is missing from the Bible. Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay. <laughs> ironically, though, that does seem to dovetail right into Psalm 2, just as close as I've almost ever heard it. Yeah, that's what made me uh, take a second look at this. And when I get prophecies, I, I I take a look for key key things in them, and if I don't find them, I just kind of disregard them. Uh, anyway, here's the next part. Now, I want you to think about, everybody, um, the recent work of uh, Barry on the Bible codes, Barry Rothman. And by the way, we're going to have him on Wednesday. Don't miss it, because he's been working on time and time travel and time machines, portals, and all of that sort of thing. And I think it's going to be one of the most interesting shows we've done. And he's done a lot of research. And as I spoke to him today, I mentioned the fact that isn't it odd that all of this is showing up in the Torah codes? And I just find that, well, here's something that kind of confirms that. Because remember, he was talking about Boson, which is Higgs Boson, and that ties directly to CERN. Anyway, here's what, he, uh, here's what this uh, prophecy says. CERN leads the charge in initiating and continuing the urgent attempts to reach darker dimensions, dimensions that were never intended to be opened by man. All of the knowledge used to gain access to these realms was given to mankind by the fallen ones, those condemned already, but who shared secrets with man after they rebelled, that I did not wish for man to have. What do you think of that one? Wow, that's uh, that's absolutely remarkable. And uh, isn't it interesting, uh, Stuart, that over, I guess, this last year, CERN has basically gone silent. We know that they're still operating. We know they're still having earthquakes around that region. And we also know about a very... Odd, uh, I believe it's Nostradamus uh, quatrain about Geneva and something that happens terrible in that place, but uh, they're operating clandestinely right now, and we're not receiving the data. Yeah, I think they pretty much shut a lot of that off because of the controversy surrounding their increasing power, that they're, they're just increasing it and increasing it and increasing it. And if those uh, visions have been true, uh they're going to go too far, and the whole thing breaks down and, I guess, pretty much blows up. But here's another interesting part of this prophecy. You will see things now in the natural that are anything but natural. As the offspring of hybrid beings, once here long ago, will be permitted to come upon the earth once again as a form of judgment. What do you think of that? Oh, excuse me. Still got reminds that me a little. Reminds me a little bit of the giant of uh, the Kandahar, you know, recently that was uh, 
Steve Quell and them are re- revealed, and actually uh, Tom Horn and and group, you know, did a uh, DVD on that and some of the data and the interviews. Yeah, I mean, uh, Quayle's book on the Giants, I think the biggest one they've picked up is like 35 feet tall. But I think they were much taller than that if you look at the Book of Enoch and what it says about them. Anyway, here's the next. Diabolical beings and creatures are returning. Their intentions are not pure as they were not created in my image and therefore do not possess my spirit within them. The manipulation of my creation and my intentions is bringing about a most horrific reality for those left here on the earth after I remove my remnant. Uh, That's kind of an interesting remark. But it ties in directly with uh, Isaiah, let not the giants live again. Here's the next part. Can you not hear what my spirit is speaking to you in this late hour, my people? I wish that none would perish. And in my mercy, I warn and I chasten and yearn for you to come to me and listen to all I have been saying to you but appears very few are truly repenting and surrendering their hearts and lives to me. Well, there's that word again, isn't it? That dirty, awful word, <laughs> repent. <laughs> we yeah, can't by, have by that. Way, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to, to mention real quick, Stuart, that I recently got that movie from uh, that Dan Garden, Sam Sarbo, and Kevin Sarbo had done with uh, uh, Sean Hannity. Let There Be mm-hmm. Light, and uh, ironically, the main focus of that movie is repentance. It's actually an individual that that hates God and is, is uh, antichrist to the core and mocks God and uh, is a total atheist, basically, and he, he, he has a supernatural experience that he cannot explain and literally does a true repentance. He does a, an about face and walks the other way. Yeah. yeah, it takes the Lord to, to reveal it a lot of time. I mean, it would be very, very interesting if people would simply just look around them to find to understand that there really is something wrong with humanity. I mean, if everybody such good, has such good in their heart, why do we have wars? Why do we even have police? Why do we have rapes, murder, um... Uh, you name the crime, and we are filled with it. So obviously, there's something wrong with humanity, and Genesis, of course, talks about the fall. And um, I've always gelled it down to one thing. If you know the difference between good and evil, and you're not under the Lord's wings, you're a fallen creature. The knowledge of good and evil, that's what caused the fall. It's right there in Genesis. And... uh, cut off the spirit from the Lord. And that's why Jesus had to come down here. Anyway, I just thought that was very, very interesting because of the way it's worded. And the last part of it is the hourglass empties rapidly, and you may not have this life by tomorrow. Come now to me quickly, my people. Now there is something I have to get into later. Don't have time, but the word is not believe in me. The word is not have faith in me. The word is come to me. And uh, that relates directly back to Matthew chapter 7. Anyway, uh, getting off that, uh, defense report of Iranian missile threat fails to consider the God factor. Now, this comes from uh, Israel, I believe. And... uh, What do you think about this? I mean, they seem to be arming more and more and more while everybody's talking peace, peace, peace. And what do you think about this Kim overture? Now they're walking back what Trump said. Have you heard any more about that? 
I heard uh, some of the generals and, and being interviewed on Fox today, and they say that they really don't trust this, that this appears to be a ploy. Uh, and uh, some of them are remarking that Trump better go into this eyes wide open because he said when these, if this peace negotiation begins to fail, it'll go downhill extremely rapidly, and we better be able to move on a moment's notice. Well, they're saying that Trump never should have said he'd meet with him in the first place, I guess, that it was a blunder on his part, And uh, but I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why not to meet him, but I would certainly have conditions on it. And if you don't meet the conditions, you don't do it. Yeah. What's interesting, Stuart, uh, it's, you know, I know Putin plays chess, but uh, Trump kind of plays cards. And it's almost like, uh, you know, if North Korea was bluffing and really didn't want the dialogue, but just wanted to do it for the world to hear, Trump called Mm -hmm. his, uh, you know, he called his bluff. And uh, now he's got to stand up or stand down. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we could go into a false peace without a peace agreement. You know, uh, I want to get into Ron Reese and what he's shown us, because that seems to be very, very interesting. He has set a lot of dates before. They come and go, don't, you know, nothing happens. But the one he's got now is very, very interesting in some of the detail that he has. And it comes along at a time when the world rhetoric is war, war, and more war. And then we have this overture from Kimmy Boy, the whiz kid. And I didn't name him Kimmy the whiz kid for nothing. He's very, very intelligent. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's somebody you got to deal with. And uh, I think he's a good chess player after all. <clears throat> He's an extortion expert. That's what he does. He extorts by threats. And um, I believe secretly they're just working to finish this off, his nuclear missiles and uh, the nuclear warheads, so that then he is a nuclear power for sure. What do you think? I, I, I mean, I just feel, I have felt for a long time that this is a trap of some type. Or the first domino maybe to fall. Yeah, it's very interesting because we do know that they're very closely connected with Iran. And uh, there's a new report out on Depcofile, uh that says Ayatollah Khomeini uh, is the lone nuclear holdout after Kim's invitation to Trump. And Iran is refusing to deal, and uh, so so we're really focusing in on uh, on Iran. But uh, this whole thing seems like it's a a web of a sort that's been woven, and hopefully we won't get entangled in it. But uh, the Middle East is on oh they're right on the verge of a major war unless something changes. Yeah, and <clears throat> what's interesting is if you look at Kim's missiles. I see both China and Russia uh, providing aid and comfort and maybe even high technology to Kim. Here's a, a interesting from this article. A high-ranking defense official revealed to the Senate on Tuesday <clears throat> that Iran has fully incorporated a Russian long-range anti-aircraft missile system into its military seriously upgrading its ability to threaten U.S. and Israeli military interests in the region. But the general's report failed to take into account divine intervention, which has plagued the system in the past. Lieutenant General Robert P. Ashley, Jr., director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, told the Senate Armed Services Committee on Tuesday about Iran's generational improvement in its capabilities. So they're saying here basically that uh, Russia is and Kim probably obviously are aiding and abetting Iran's rise as a nuclear power over there. Do you think Israel 
will preempt, or do you think Iran might preempt? You know, we have that Daniel 8. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, and you really, at this time, you know, Israel is well known to for a preemptive strike. But Iran also knows that from the history of, uh, you know, the way Israel has struck other, other locations. And at the same time, North Korea, you know, they caught them actually shipping uh, chemical weapons uh, parts and, you know, and ingredients to Syria. So, North, you know, North Korea and Iran and Syria, they're all up to their neck in it, and Russia's in there with them. And, uh, but this thing is, is on a hair trigger, I mean, really, right now. And, of course, we have sent uh, a few thousand troops uh, to set up, uh, I guess what you could call anti-missile systems all over Israel, different locations across Israel, and mm-hmm. uh, we're prepared to defend Israel. We're already there. Most people don't even have a clue, but we are. Yeah, we have a big underground base, I understand, over there as well. Somebody leaked that information. Okay, for Israel, it says the Juniper Cobra 2018 exercise will serve as an opportunity for the IDF and the IF in particular to enhance operational capabilities in the face of high trajectory threats, explained Brigadier General, I don't know how you pronounce that, Chief of Israel's Air Defense Command. So it says they're in the midst of a large-scale training exercise. So obviously these things cost a fair amount of money, so they must believe that this attack could come just about any time. What do you think? Yeah, they, about that? they they are they're prepared for an attack to come any time and what they're not saying too, unless you really look at the small writing is that uh they're gonna be there till April. So they're expecting a marked attack. Well well here's something that switching subjects. And I don't know whether you'd call this prophetic, speculation, or what you would actually call it. A massive geomagnetic storm is going to hit the Earth on March 18th. According to scientists at the Russian Academy of Sciences, a huge magnetic storm is making its way here in current times. The storm will, as some have said, cause headaches, dizziness of people all over the world. Now, we've had reports of that before, right? I mean, was it Canary Islands where Stan was getting, Stan Dale was getting reports of people who were literally getting sick because of the, uh, I guess, anomaly? Yeah. Or North Pole or, or polar kind of a thing that developed. Anyway, according to the graph, three days before the storm on March 14th, 16th, and 17th, we will experience intense geomagnetic altercations. Once this storm reaches us on March 18th, things might be a bit odd. It can disrupt GPS navigations, disrupt satellites, and even harm power grids across the planet. This will be the third since the beginning of this year to actually reach our planet. The other two took place January 15th and February 19th, but they were not really big storms. What do you think about this one? Yeah, that's uh, that sounds rather bad. Uh, you know, I've never seen them predict one uh, that far ahead. Usually, we only get like 48 hours notice, but. Uh, the storms that we've had basically have either been G1 or G2 geomagnetic storms, and G2 can really trouble the satellite. Uh, we're, we've been under a continuous stream of charged particles from the sun for one reason or another uh, for almost two months now uh, with a blank sun, basically, just totally blank, mm-hmm. no sunspots. And um, something really weird is going on. It makes you wonder if uh, we're in and into that time <laughs> called soon, or, or the uh, the Ed Dames kill shot, uh, I guess you could say, time frame. Uh, you know, this, this is odd. I've never heard of one coming 
you know, we just went through a G1 geomagnetic storm in the mm-hmm. last uh, 24, 36 hours. Uh, so that sounds like another one and a bigger one coming. Now, I don't know what, uh, you know, G that would be, three or four maybe. You know, they're ramping it up if that's true. Now, I haven't seen the data on NOAA or space weather either one, but, uh, you know, I, I, I hadn't heard about that report, as I told you earlier today, so I don't know. I don't know how to, other than tell people keep an eye on things and be warned. I mean, we know this stuff is happening. Well, they may be basing it upon the fact that they can see the other side of the sun now. And, uh, you know, they have, I don't know if it's x-ray or how they do it, but evidently there may be a a coronal hole or something of that nature coming around our way. According to NOAA, a a geomagnetic storm is, by their definition, a, a major disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere, that occurs when there is very a very efficient exchange of energy from the solar wind into the space environment and surrounding Earth. So we already know that people, I mean, I've gotten reports from people, they just feel wiped out. They, yeah. they feel weak. They get dizzy from time to time. And if you're very susceptible to electromagnetics, that can happen. Anyway, they say here the largest. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. Oh, I was just, I was just going to mention what you just said. I've, I've had reports too from people that are feeling this, and these geomagnetic storms are bothering them. And, and by the way, uh, recently, you know, I get some local newspapers, and they, sometimes there's two pages of obits. I have never, and I know that's not anything people want to think about, but you know, I have never seen so many obits as I'm seeing over the last few months. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, well, it could be the flu as well as all this. I mean, we are entering into a time when your physical health is uh, under attack. And, folks, you need to stock up on some essential vitamins and whatnot before they are outlawed and you can't get them anymore. Uh, Your vitamin E's, your D3's, C, and stuff like that. If they bring in this... uh, new system that they're using in Europe, which I think they would, as soon as Trump is out of office, you're going to see it clamp down like you wouldn't believe. And uh, stock up on some of the, you know, the things you really do need. you got to remember something about our food. You may think you're eating like you eat salads and stuff like that, but a lot of the minerals are gone now from the ground. So the plants just don't have the mineral content that they did. And so you may think you're eating fine, but you're not necessarily. Anyway, the largest storms that result from these conditions are associated with solar coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. And uh, so I'm not sure where they're getting this is going to come from. But anyway, it's kind of a weird article, and I just thought I should bring it up. And here's one that's interesting. Larry, NASA astronaut who spent a year in space now has different DNA from his twin. Now, remember uh, that mystic over there? Oh, I can't remember where he came from. But he was talking about these cosmic waves that are coming in from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And that is from Paul, Dr. Paul LaViolette, who was one of the first to uh, talk about gravity waves, cosmic waves that come out from the center of the Milky Way. Now, we have pictures of activity. What he says is the core of these galaxies, and the Milky Way included, are usually very quiet. But then they go into, uh, I guess, a feeding frenzy would be the way to speak of it, where they gobble up stars by the hundreds and by or by the thousands. And when this is happening, they emit huge radiation spikes coming out from the core. And they are uh, cosmic waves as well as gravitational waves. They have already photographed gravitational waves. And we have also photographed huge activity now 
coming out of the core of the uh, Milky Way. So the light of that activity has already reached us. We have the pictures of it, which probably means that this gravitational wave and these cosmic waves are going to soon be here, which gives verification to, uh, I think it was the Camelot Project, where they interviewed Dr. LaViolette. And uh, an insider called in, and he was the one who said that they already have photographed the gravitational and cosmic waves coming in. And he thought maybe they'd reach here 2018, 2019, 2017. They weren't exactly sure. So a gravitational wave, if the only way to describe it, if you could put a ping pong ball like in your bathtub, with water in it, obviously, and you agitate the water, just watch the ping pong ball go up and down and, and spin. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen to Earth when this hits. And Dr. Paul LaViolette has already proved that they've had cosmic waves come through, and it alters the DNA of life here on Earth. And they have found mutations soon after that. So that brings to mind what this uh, mystic said, that we were going to go through one of these waves. And remember, Larry, we have talked from time to time about how one of these waves could be related very closely to the rapture of the church and how it could distort time and space. What do you think? Well, that, yeah, that, that that's very interesting because I remember those conversations and you know, we find the data out there. It's out there, but it's not just uh, available, you know, in mainstream media. And one of the interesting things is the fact that they have concluded that the gravity waves are multidimensional. So that apparently is even affecting dimensions other than ours. Yeah, and I think that uh, that stuff that Barry was getting into is very fascinating, and it's kind of interesting to me. Not only is he finding it in the Toro Codes, but right now. Why is this being revealed now? And remember what the Lord said about taking his people out. It would be in the twinkling of an eye. So rapid, you could if you blinked, you'd miss the thing if you were left behind. The person you were talking to just wouldn't be there anymore. <laughs> And that's basically what that mystic said. When this happens, people are going to vanish, instantly vanish. And uh, so th it's getting very, very interesting, um, particularly with this DNA. I've, I'm positive in my own mind that when a person comes to Christ and is really authentically born again, the DNA is changed inside them. And I think if you go back into Genesis, there's a DNA change in the fall, which is why the uh, Twin Towers, that's part of the DNA. You have to, if you go on to, I think it would be YouTube, just type in uh, Twin Towers DNA or something of that nature, you'd find an awful lot of stuff about why uh, they use, for example, 923. And it has to do with your DNA structure. It has to do with uh, how you're made up. And, of course, we go from a twin to one or hybrid. So it's very, very interesting. All of this is all tied together. And we really don't know, do we, what this universe is like. Well, it, you know, you said something years ago when we were talking about uh, creatures and uh, the different kinds of creatures, and you said that you felt like, uh, you know, you could just literally some of the different DNA that's there that they call junk DNA is not really junk. It's some stuff that if it ever turned on, that'd be a different creature. Yes. Uh, that's to me, disproves evolution because everything has a complete set of DNA and certain switches are turned off and certain switches are turned on. If you turn on certain switches, we get Larry. If you turn on a few other switches, you get Stewie. And then, you know, it's, <laughs> there are billions of these uh, switches that can be turned on and off. So then you have to ask the question, well, who created 
the switches in the first place, and secondly, who's turning them on and off? You know, I mean, yeah. these kind of questions people really should think on. And here's another one about DNA. Russia begins feeding half the world as fears grow over American GMO plot to alter our DNA. And that kind of interest. Now, that's sort of fall, so you have to take these things with a grain of salt, but I think this one's probably very accurate. What do you, what do you think about that? I, I mean, um, why are they messing with all these new genetic modification operations for plants? Yeah, and, and, and Stuart, uh, it's not just Russia. Uh, there are other countries that are not accepting any of our, any of our foodstuffs that have got the, uh, the uh, um, mm-hmm. changes in it, you know, from, um, what is that, Monsanto? Yes, Monsanto, yep, particularly Roundup. Yeah. And they keep, now, I, I, uh, I was working for an outfit down in Texas, and what he did was he made these high-clearance tractors, with tassel detasseling equipment and was selling them to all the major um, seed companies well in their labs they keep changing these things they're changing the dna of these plants that's how they do it they genetically modify and especially corn and of course corn corn uh, syrup whatever they call it isn't just about everything so if they modify it, you eat it, it can possibly change your DNA structure. Uh, it just makes you wonder exactly how far. I'll read part of this. This is kind of interesting. A new Ministry of Agriculture report states that this year's grain harvest is the largest on record, enabling Russia to now feed half of the world and could not have come at a more critical moment in time as chilling evidence is now showing that the DNA methylation process used by the Americans to create their genetically modified GMO foods has been found to be accumulating in GMO corn. Many experts believe it is causing demasculized boys and young men whose sperm counts among the world's male population have declined as much as 40 to 50 percent. And I've read that elsewhere, that the sperm count in uh, American men is way, way down. What do you think about that? Well, I actually saw a report today on Fox, and they were saying that masculinity in America is way, way down, too, and that women are taking over. Well, that's part of uh, Jeremiah's prophecies, that the men become as women. And uh, that is part of that demasculation. Well, of course, all you got to do is watch the TV ads. And they make the men absolutely stupid, but the women are highly, highly intelligent. And they become the controllers. And I think that's one of the reasons why there's so, such a high, uh, high rate of uh, these ads now that are doing this they're trying to how do i say unisex where everything's equal which is probably directly related to these kids now who are how do how do you word that confused over whether they're a man or a woman or a boy or a girl and that their anatomy doesn't seem to matter So with all this confusion, doesn't that kind of lead into uh, what we're watching? That there's a little difference between the men and the women? I remember a sci-fi picture, Starship Trooper, I think was the name of it. Did you ever see that one? Oh, I've seen that numerous times. Yeah, the, the bugs. Yeah, and that was, uh, you know, everybody was, that was definitely Nazi Germany all over again, only a high-tech version of it. But remember (laughs) how the men and the women all showered together, and there was basically unisex. Yeah. 
And Bible prophecy says that marriage will be outlawed, not going to be any marriage under uh, the Antichrist system. So this, it's all leading to this total mass confusion of who we are, what we are, and it's totally Antichrist. Because God did not create Adam and Steve, he created Adam and Eve. And uh, there is a big difference there, I think. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. Oh, well, that's, it, I guess you got to laugh or you'll cry. But I was, as you were saying that, I was reminded of the old movie, the science fi, sci-fi movie, The Fly, if you remember that. And that's the only time I remember a sex changing is when things started to fall off. Yes. Yeah. Uh, getting back to Barry Rothman, I was thinking about when, when we're going to have him on Wednesday. But as I talked to him this afternoon, we were talking about some of the movies that are out there about time travel. And Deja Vu is one of them. Remember that one? Oh, that, yeah, well, that's that, great. And then there was another one. I can't think of the name. Well, Back to the Future. But there was another one he mentioned. And they are beginning to crack this. But I have to wonder if, you know, the Lord has his prophecies. And, and Jesus said, not one dot, not one tittle shall ever pass from any of this that's been uttered. Which means they may be able to go back and observe something or go forward to observe something. But no way are they going to be able to go back and change anything of significance let's put it that way of major significance they would i can't imagine the lord allowing that so yeah anyway uh, as a matter to, of fact uh, yeah go ahead yeah I, I was just going to mention uh there's a brand new you know i told you about this uh a wrinkle in time novel by madeline mm-hmm. ellingall and mm-hmm. uh, i actually got the original movie uh, which is a DVD, A Wrinkle in Time, and me and Darnett watched it, and wow, uh, it had a lot of stuff in it. Now, I can't say anything uh, for the movie that's just coming out. They just did a remake of it, and uh, Oprah Winfrey and uh, uh, some other stars star in it. It's, it's coming out this weekend, I think, in theaters. I don't know how good it is, but uh, mm-hmm. the movie that I watched that was made from the book is A Wrinkle in Time, and it talks about celestial beings, uh, the great darkness, the cloud of evil that comes against the universe and begins to devour planets. And, and it is literally got, for the, the young people, uh, the book and the movie has incredible science and spirituality applications that are phenomenal. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And it just, you know, dovetails back into what Barry Rothman's been finding and what we've been talking about. Yeah. Yeah, there's something coming um uh... I think it's going to surprise everyone. I mean, when you really look at the, at what the Lord had to say about it, He said, "Pray always that you stand before the that you be found worthy to stand before the Son of Man and escape all these things that are coming upon the earth." And uh, it's got to be very bad. And Daniel it says, "This is a time of trouble unlike anything ever seen before." Jesus reiterates that in the Old in the New Testament. And uh, we've all pointed to the destroyer, but I think there's a combination of things that are all coming together, convergence of solar cycles, the destroyer coming in, gravitational wave, and cosmic waves. And because we do not know how the rapture is going to occur, it could be very easily to uh, just a simple change in the electromagnetic structure or in the frequency change, and you'd be gone in yeah, a split what, second. Go ahead. Yeah, that's go ahead. What Stan, yeah, I was just going to say that's what Stan Dale seems to indicate is is he is kind of looking at a change in frequency that would change everything. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, yeah. Stuart, uh, you know, the sun has become so anomalous and the sun really affects our entire, uh, you know, galaxy, uh, the whole solar system. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, something Stan was kind of concerned with because he said not only over the last number of years has the sun been changing light, 
and, uh, you know, radiation, but it's also changing frequencies. And he said, we're not really familiar with all those frequencies. Matter of fact, a lot of them we can't monitor or even hear. Yeah, they're outside of our range of uh, recognition or seeing or anything else. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I think we really are coming up on a very, very anomalous time for the sun. And Stan, I think, said, too, that that could happen where the sun might just blink out. And that would be the three days of darkness that uh, Roman Catholic prophecy has had for years and years. It's going to be three days of total darkness. And Stan said, when that happens, do not go outside at all. Stay inside. Wherever you're caught, stay inside. Even if it's for three days, you'll survive. I guess it's something to do with the radiation that will be coming down our way. So, yeah, yeah I don't think we have a clue, Larry. I think <laughs> we're going to be in a time unprecedented, and uh, it's not going to be good for humanity. Anyway, getting back to this report, too much population, no problem. Let's just pick some groups that aren't contributing much to the global economy and kill them off. There will be a fewer mouths to feed, more land to grow food for the rest of us, and more water to irrigate the crops. Well, that is actually what the rich men have openly basically said in their writings. They want a massive depopulation. It's in the Georgia Guidestones. The end result is 500 million worldwide. Well, that means you got to kill off about, what, 6.5 billion people? Yeah. So, so the question is how they think they're going to do it. You know? Anyway, what you got that you want to bring in? Uh, I found something really interesting Um because of, uh, you know, two reports actually from Skywatch TV, and I'd like your opinion on both of them because it involves Trump. Yes. Uh, this is Skywatch TV with uh, Thomas Horn. Number one article is Sign of Antichrist Imminent Arrival, Global Support Erupting for a Third Temple Cohen Tying President Trump and Ancient King Cyrus and the Building of the Third Temple. Now, that's interesting. And then on the yes. other hand, also, there's a new report that says a new movie to send shockwaves this October. It says a film based on Defender Publishing book, The Third, the Trump Prophecies, and, we, of course, we know that was by uh, Mark Taylor, yep. uh, to receive wide national uh, theatrical release just before the uh, midterm elections. And uh, this is going to be about Trump. I think the name of the new film is going to be Commander, and it's going to be all across the country. Uh, I guess talking about Trump and the Mark Taylor prophecies, I'm not sure how that's going to come out or what it's about, but uh, there's a lot Hmm. coming out about Trump. Well, and, you know, I've often wondered, are we entering into this period of, of peace? You know, Trump is very shrewd. Uh, player. He's smarter than most people. He's been in this business for years. He knows all of these people worldwide. He's made billions of dollars. And, uh, you know, people forget he's serving without any pay, whatever. And uh, he's, he's uh, they say that this trade thing that he worked up, this trade barrier, which, by the way, noise claims is coming, I want to get into that a little bit before we run out of time. But um, I think people are underestimating Trump. Consider what he has done that's good for the United States, good for the people, against all odds of deep state. And, you know, when you really stop and analyze all the things that he has accomplished, um, we're still bottoming out economically-wise. But let me read a little bit of what Noise has to say was coming. And this is why I'm a little bit skeptical about all these peace, peace, when there is no peace, and, uh, you know, all of this stuff. Here's what some of the things she says. Some are many people, and this is from Phoenix Rising, folks, 
Very interesting book. She, this lady is Antichrist to the core. She comes right out and says so. She doesn't believe in any of that stuff. However, people have, Jesus said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, not just Christians, not just Jewish people, but all around the world. They will be given dreams and visions, uh, and we prove out whether it's real or not by whether it comes to pass. But anyway, this is what she says. Many people have great unrest deep in their hearts about who they're working for. Many workplaces not be fair. These working peoples give boss all they got to give. They give and they give. They get no stuff back. They're going to stop work. They're going to work. Now, you got to remember, this was issued back in 1967, I believe it was. That's 30 years ago. Yeah. Many working people's all going to stop work. That strikes and be plenty angry. It's going to go on all over. And uh, then she says this. Um, let me go over here. Boss is going to take business places to other lands. Has that happened? <laughs> Bosses get good business and get good workers all at the same time. See, many people have no have jobs, no have no monies, no more. They also going to get machines to do work of the workers. Then she says, uh, well, here's what uh, Mary Summer Rain says. Then you foresee major companies relocating their factories from America and constructing them overseas where they can operate in a more advantage, uh, cost-effective manner. And they'll also retrofit the remaining American fam fam uh, factories to accommodate a greater utilization of computer automation, resulting in massive layoffs. <laughs> Has that happened or not? Yeah. Uh, that's just one of thing. Uh, then she says, a lot of factories will relocate. Won't that also affect our import-export balance? Yep, going to change. They're going to get real bad, maybe almost stop even. When that almost stop, many more big businesses and factories going to stop too. Many people now out of work, no place to work. Many peoples be plenty angry. Um, then she says that uh, president have more monies for more poor people by making all other people pay more monies to the country, taxes. They're going to raise taxes to do it. And then she talks about how this thing is all going to stop. Uh, we gonna go on now after big business go away from people's tiny ones also gonna stop many people think they be okay they safe because they have owned business because they have no have to work for boss they all be wrong and she talks about uh, the stock market going to absolute zero can you believe that uh, everybody out there, the, particularly the uh, people that are economic rogues, they're all saying that the global economy is ready to go down any time. Anyway, money place is going to stop, she says. They're not going to give out more big monies to build. That's exactly what's happening right now. The banks stopped giving out big loans for, what, two, three years ago now? No more yeah. people's going to have monies for houses. No more places left to even sell houses. So um, the whole thing goes. And it's going to go down the tube, she says. Many people's going to try to sell house and land to get more monies to live. They're not going to get enough even. They're going to still owe plenty monies. Stuff going to be like big whirlpools, cycled going down and down, deep and deeper. It's going to suck way down, 
it not ever going to go up again. So there you go. She is saying that uh, when this starts to hit, and you remember Dave Wilkinson's vision. He said the banks closed for six months. Yeah. And Noise makes a comment in here about having some cash around because cash will be king during this whole process. Didn't you run into that somewhere down there where they had an electrical failure or something and the only way you could get anything was to pay cash? Yeah, that was some stores around uh, Mena, Arkansas, and that, that region. All the electronics went down, and uh, if you didn't have cash, you couldn't buy anything. Yeah, folks, I know we're running short here on, on time, but if you don't have cash, stuck, <laughs> put it in on, under the mattress or hide it somewhere. But do have some cash so that you can survive because even a, a massive CME can wipe out our whole electrical grid. And the only way you're going to be able to buy anything is through cash. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to it's going to get very, very interesting, according to to her. And I'm not telling people to believe it necessarily. But so far, from what I have just read, I don't see where she's off. Everything she said yeah, here has happened or happening now. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people that don't realize who she is, this is an old Native American woman that lived in an old kind of vacant house out in the middle of the woods without even electricity or, I guess, running water. I mean, yes. uh, you know, it's shocking. And, 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 of course, if you haven't read her book, Phoenix Rising, boy, there's a lot of stuff covered in there, including aliens. Yes, the arrival, and uh, she talks about uh, the church and how the church is affected by it and uh, how the Bible will become... Uh, basically unbelievable at that point when the arrival takes place because the aliens are going to have all kinds of proof with them. Yeah, this is amazing stuff. And again, I can't tell people to believe what she says, but you can go on the track record of the things that she's talking about. And in fact, the Trump tariffs is the start probably of massive trade wars. She talks about that, that there are going to be massive trade wars and that the countries not trust each other, and it finally degenerates down into massive war. And I, I think we're very, very close to that. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting because we are very on a tippy, how do I say, economic uh, system, and this boon in the stock market, don't let it fool you. Uh, anything that goes up that fast is a balloon, and all you got to do is stick a pin in it, and down it goes. And what goes up has to come down. So just a warning for people who think they're going to make a fortune in the stock market because of how it's going up. Anyway, what else you got, Larry? we got 90 seconds. Oh, I was just going to mention that uh, Holly Dale had a comment today. She said uh, Native Americans were tr- the true immigrants migrating to the America continent in three waves and says DNA shows this, she says, when do we get to call ourselves Americans again in the USA? Oh, really? Well, I've always yeah. thought that the Native Americans, and I know a lot of people laugh and mock and when I say it, I think they are part of the lost tribes. And uh, I think the DNA is going to prove it uh, when they really get down to it. Uh, there's something about Native Americans and their their Native American blankets and all of that stuff that they have. Yeah. Very, very much like temple stuff back in the days of uh, King David and whatnot. People really need, they mock it anyway. They say that can't possibly be true. I think it's going to be proven true. What do you think? Well, I think exactly. Uh, Matter of fact, I, I know we don't have enough time. Maybe the next program we can talk a little more on that subject. Yeah, it's very, very interesting, and I did do an interview with your wife about blood work, so that was kind of interesting. Anyway, folks, thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you next week if the Lord is willing. So take care of yourselves and get some cash and put it under the mattress. Anyway, good night, take care, and we'll see you next week.